You are watching Seafood News Weekly Video brought to you by Erna Berry's Comtel. Erna Berry's Comtel has long been the primary source for reliable protein market prices, news, and analysis. With over 16,000 active quotations and unique data points, Comtel supports users in leveraging expert market intelligence and pricing data to negotiate with confidence, boost efficiency, and design powerful strategies. I'm Erna Berry market reporter Lauren Castiglione, and I'm happy to welcome back Seafood News Managing Editor Amanda Buckle from Maternity Leave. That's right, I'm back, baby. And here's a picture of my baby. Her name is Harper. She's a little over three months old already. And here's another picture of her with her big sister, Emma. So just proud mom sharing photos. <laughs> um, but my maternity leave is great, but I'm obviously happy to dive back into all the seafood goodness. So let's do just that. In our top story, Seattle Fish is under new ownership. The company, which has been owned by the Iacino family for 103 years, will now be owned by Armin Agra, a founder's company. Seattle Fish CEO and President Derek Figueroa said in a statement that this new ownership and their investment inside of the business will allow Seattle Fish to fulfill their leadership aspiration to lead the growth of sustainable seafood consumption on a larger scale than ever before. Despite the change in ownership, the company notes that there will be no changes to operations that will impact their business or relationship with customers. They will also be retaining 100% of their staff in the transition, including the leadership and executive team. In other news, a 967 square mile area in the Gulf of Maine will remain closed to lobster fishing for the winter following a federal appeals court ruling on November 16th. The closure aims to protect the endangered North Atlantic right whales. The ruling comes a month after the Maine Lobster Union was granted emergency relief from the closure by U.S. District Judge Lancey Walker. The three-judge panel wrote in its order that the district court misapprehended the record and overstepped its role in rejecting the judgments of the agency that Congress has charged with protecting endangered marine animals. The closure, along with the other rule changes, including state-specific gear marking and introduction of ropeless fishing gear, was included in the National Marine Fisheries Service's Atlantic Large Whale Take Reduction Plan modifications. Moving along, U.S. District Judge Edward Chen denied former Bumblebee Seafood CEO Christopher Lischewski's motion for an early release from his 40-month prison sentence stemming from his role in the antitrust conspiracy to fix canned tuna prices. Lischewski filed an appeal seeking to serve the remainder of his sentence in home confinement on November 5th. His initial request from home confinement was denied by the warden at the U.S. Penitentiary of Tucson. The defense argued that due to Lischewski's age and medical condition, he is at risk of contracting COVID-19. Lischewski's appeal was denied with the court finding that there are no extraordinary and compelling reasons to grant the relief requested. The former Bumblebee exec has only served 15 months of his sentence. And finally, congratulations are in order for Fish Fix co-founders Melissa Harrington and Emily Castro, who landed an investment deal with Lori Grenier on ABC's Shark Tank. Harrington and Castro, who launched their premium seafood delivery service in 2017, appeared on the reality TV show on November 12th. Explaining their business, which they say is set apart from the rest with their thaw, prep, and simple cooking instructions, the co-founders revealed that they were looking for a $200,000 investment for a 15% stake in their company. Shark, Kevin O'Leary, expressed interest for a 30% stake, but Grenier came in at 25%, which Harrington and Castro accepted. We spoke to the Fish Fix co-founders on the Seafood News podcast this week to get a more behind-the-scenes detail and find out what's next for the company. Be sure to check out the podcast when it's released on Spotify, SoundCloud, and Apple Podcasts on Monday, November 22nd. Subscribe to our channel below and be sure to head over to seafoodnews.com or visit the Seafood tab in Comptel for a comprehensive look at the latest market and industry news. Thanks for watching and you be well. well.